Hello and uh, welcome to Key Stage 1 Food Tech. Well, I'm not sure about that actually, if it's Key Stage 1 really, I'm not qualified. But, I'm going to show you how to make something and it is aimed at 5 to 10 year olds. So I'm just putting my uh, apron on. If you've got an apron, pop it on, keep your clothes clean. Mum and Dad will be happy. What we're going to make today is this. You can pan in, Amy. So this is a giant cookie pizza. Plenty of slices for everybody, but you might want to gift it to your mum or your dad. Why not? And we're going to decorate it later. So I'm going to show you how to make the whole of this. So you need a few things to prep in advance. So uh, hopefully you've got the biggest bowl that you can get. Save a lot of mess. Uh, you need a hair mixer. Make sure it's plugged in. Which it is. Uh, a couple of measuring spoons if you have them. I've got a, a spatula, but if you haven't got this, then you also need a, then you need a uh, uh, a large metal spoon. That'll be fine. You need a sieve, parchment paper. Um, and that's really about, oh and a bit of cling film for later on, but I'll show you that later. And that's about it, and a blunt knife, because obviously we've got five to ten year olds, so I don't want any sharp knives. Uh, unless if you're not confident to do that, then just ask your mum, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So ingredients, you should have one block of butter. Don't need all of it, I'll come back to that in a minute. Brown sugar, light like brown sugar. Caster sugar. Vanilla extract. Una egg also known as one egg, self-raising flour, and some Nutella, because who doesn't like Nutella, especially when it's a kilo. You don't need a kilo, by the way, it's a joke. And then various toppings. Now, we, we'll come back to that later to make this lovely pizza. And you don't have to have the toppings that I have, but we'll come back to that in part two. Okay, so first thing you've got to do, if you've measured your ingredients out already, Brilliant. I am going to be measuring it out because I'm trying to make it educational. So if you've got some scales, get your scales, pop your bowl on it, turn it on. And the first thing we're going to pop in there is some butter. Now you need uh, 95 grams of butter, so make sure your scales are showing grams. Um, and it should be a room temperature of butter, it's quite soft. Um, so we'll just chunk some of this off. Oops, maybe not drop it like I just did. And then pop that in your bowl. Just keep adding it until we get to 95 grams. Now, I don't know if you know where butter comes from, because it doesn't come from a tree. So, uh, anybody know where butter comes from? Amy, do you know where butter comes from? That's right, double cream. It comes from cream. And if you whip cream hard enough, you'll be left with buttermilk and butter. But there's no point in doing all that effort just to make it, because you can just go to the shop and buy it. There we go. Anyway, so uh, butter. Once you've got your butter in there, and then you go to um, some sugar. So we'll do the caster sugar first. So you need 90 grams of caster sugar. And if you're posh, you can sieve it. So I'm going to sieve it. As Amy says, I'm posh. <laughs> anyway, so I'll sieve this. There we go, perfect. Get rid of that. Do you know where sugar comes from? It does, it comes from sugar beet, which is grown in the ground and it looks like a big chunk of plant, basically. Yeah. So how they make it into these little granules, look if you have a look. Let me zoom in a bit. How you, how you make it that fine? That's a lot of little pixies chopping it up into this. Sort of thing. Ask your mum, she'll tell you that. Anyway, moving on. Then we go to the light brown sugar. Now this gives you a really, really nice flavour. Quite caramelly. You don't need your um, uh, sieve for this. You need 80 grams of this. So let me put 80 in. Just go. Uh, 
There we go. So I've got 80 grams in there. By the way, if it, when you're weighing it, uh, if it's like three or four grams over, don't worry. It's not like making a cake where it needs to be exact. If you're a little bit short or over, really won't affect it, honestly. Anyway, so you remove your scales. You'll need those again in a minute. Now you get to the exciting bit, the noisy bit. And we've got to mix this together with the hand mix. It's quicker with this. Uh, and then you'll know when it's ready because it will go pale. But when you start mixing, if you've not used one of these before, always use it at slow speed first. Like that. You see why you need a big bowl? And just keep going around in circles and then just speed it up a little bit. just show what I've got. So it should look a bit like uh, crumbs. So it goes pale and a little bit crumbly like that. This is perfect for a cookie. Oh, hang on a minute, gotta let the cat out. After you, Charlie. <laughs> Sorry about that. Lucky that's not a zoom call. Okay, so what we've got to do now, get your egg. Hope you've got an egg. Is it a brown egg? White egg? Blue egg? Whatever egg you've got. So I've got a brown one. Um, so you just uh, got to break that into it. Do you know why mine's brown? Because it was laid by a brown chicken. <laughs> uh, have you got a white egg? Guess what? It was laid by a white chicken. You can actually get blue eggs as well. My wife got some blue eggs the other day, and guess what they're laid by? Oops. <laughs> blue chickens. So you pop your egg in there, and then wipe your hands on some towel, or a tea towel, or your apron, it doesn't matter. I just don't want to get my apron dirty yet. Time for that later. So once you put your egg in there, you need to get your vanilla paste or, or vanilla extract. Yours might be in a bottle, mine is in a jar. So um, it doesn't matter. But you need one teaspoon. So hopefully, if you've got a teaspoon, it's perfect. If you've got measuring spoons like I've got, pick the one teaspoon one. Just check it. There we go. And then just drizzle it in there. Nice big drizzle. Perfect. This adds flavouring, and who doesn't like vanilla flavouring, got to be honest, superb. You're going to ask me where this comes from, aren't you? Well, vanilla actually comes from a pod, a long, long pod, all the way from Madagascar, which is a hot country, and I'm not going to talk about that. Anyway, going back to my cookie. So, we're getting there. So it should look a bit like this. Get your scales again. And we're going to slowly add in self raising flour. And we've got to fold this in. And we put the scales on. Now you need 180 grams of self-raising flour. Oh, and you need your sieve, sorry. Because you want to sieve out any lumps or anything. So just pop it in here. There you go. Try and keep it in your bowl. Do you know where flour comes from? 
<laughs> it doesn't come from the plastic container or bag, no. So farmers grow wheat in a field, and then when, when it's uh, grown, and it's ready, it has, little, it has little seeds, and they grind it between two stones, and you get this nice powdery flour. Magic. So, what was it? 180. Oh, perfect. There you go, I've got 180. Let me get rid of that as well. Now, what we've got to do is uh, just fold this in with a spatula. Okay, so you get your spatula, um, and then you fold this in. Just make sure you hold your bowl and then tip it up, as in let go of it. Otherwise, it'll be a big mess. No, don't worry, it'll start to come together. Might take a short while. I have to get my hands in it. There we go, you can see it changing colour once the white goes, i.e. the flower, that means it's mixed in. There we go, this is looking good now. And this is in real time. In editing. Okay. Okay, so once it's got to this stage, then you want to add your chocolate chips in. So 100 grams of chocolate chips, just pour it in. And then we just got to stir these in. Or mix them in, should I say, and stir them in. Now there's nothing better than a cookie chocolate chips in it. That's what I think. Okay, so now I'm going to put my hands in it because it's got to that point where I can't do any more with this, with my spatula there. So you can get your hands in. Just press it in. And make a nice ball. Make sure you get every chocolate chip. Now, I actually haven't got chocolate chips, so I've got chocolate chunks, because it's just preference. That's what I like. Big fat chunks of chocolate. So, make it into a nice round ball, like so. And then, what we've got to get is the uh, baking sheet. So, let me get that. Okay, so you grab your ball of cookie dough. This is the best thing. Don't eat it, not yet. Uh, let me put this out of the way somewhere. Okay, you get your baking sheet and put some uh, parchment paper. That's what this is. Yours might be brown, don't worry about the colour. It really doesn't matter. Just pop that in the middle. Can you see it's quite large? And we're going to roll it out. Now I've got a trick here to make sure your rolling pin, I've got a wooden one, doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's round and looks like a stick. You then Get your parchment paper and put it on the top. And if you pat it down with your hand just to start it off. Now what we want to do is roll it out. So it's about, let me show you. So it's about this thick. Yeah, like the thickness of your finger. Can you see? There we go. If I could eat that now. Look. And obviously we want to keep it round, so you roll it a little bit this way. And then a little bit that way. And then what we'll do, we'll lift it up to see if we've got it the right thickness. And we definitely don't want it too thin, because I'll get into a cookie. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So don't worry that it's not exactly a perfect circle, because pizzas aren't generally perfect in a circle. But if you want to tidy it up, just use your finger. Just push it in a bit, like so. 
There we go. Now what we do now, put a bit of cling film. So you might need to get your parent or guardian just to help you with this. But just pull a bit of this out. Now this uh, cling film is like a plastic film. It keeps things fresh. Uh, it's really annoying. It sticks everywhere you don't want it to. But anyway, here we go. So try and get it out like that and just put it on the top. Now you're going to say, Ian, why are you doing that? Because what we're going to do now is put it in the fridge for 30 minutes. And that will make it all firm, all hard. And then you put it into the oven at 160 degrees for 20 minutes. Uh, the reason that you put it in the fridge is if you don't, if you put this in the oven now, it will go all flat because the butter's all soft in it. And then it just won't look like a pizza, it'll just look like a skinny thin mess of a cookie. It's a bit sad. Anyway, so I want it to look a bit more like this. It will spread a little bit in the oven because of the heat, obviously, uh, but generally it will look a bit like that. So, We'll come back in part two, where we will have already baked this, so you go off, pop it in your fridge, 30 minutes, then put it in the oven at 160 degrees, get somebody to help you with that, because I don't want you near a hole. Perfect. Okay, welcome back to part two of by a giant pizza cookie. So uh, hopefully you've got this out of the oven. This is cooled. So uh, as you can see, it's still got larger than uh, it was earlier. So slide this onto a board, or you can put it onto a presentation plate like we've got here with our pizza. I'm gonna take it off. Uh, so I'll leave it on there actually, that'll be fine. So we are ready. Got a couple more things to do now and then we're done. So this is the exciting bit. You know when you make a cake or something like that, it's always exciting to do the decoration. This is the best bit. So we're gonna be playing with Nutella. It's gotta be the best thing. And then we're gonna do the toppings, which we have a selection here. You can have whatever toppings you want. So uh, everyone likes Nutella. Well, I don't know who doesn't like Nutella. So uh, what we're, we're doing instead of a uh, obviously tomato sauce, <laughs> we use a Nutella. Um, we've uh, just put this in the microwave just to soften it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see this. So it's just a little bit runnier than normal. Uh, you can do it via various ways. So we just did it a half power on the microwave for 20 seconds or just put it in a hot bowl of water or a saucepan of water uh, for a few minutes. Um, just to cheat really, just to get it to soften up so it's easy to spread. But you might need to get someone to help you if you're quite young, so uh, don't want you going near the microwave. Anyway, so what you need um, is just make some nice tollops. This is just the best bit. Uh, you can make as much mess as you like. Did I say that? Ooh. Sure, we'll get some comments now. Anyway, so you just ladle it on. Generous as you want. If you like Nutella, then the more the merrier. <laughs> no idea. Like I said, I don't know who doesn't. And then you just spread it around. You can just move it around. Like this. Now obviously, in a real pizza, the tomato topping doesn't go all the way to the edge. So we're gonna do the same. So you leave a border. Now I know what you're, doing, what you're all going to say, where does Nutella come from Ian? Well, does it come from a cow? Could you imagine if you could have a cow in your garden and you just pulled the teats and instead of milk, Nutella came out? That would be immense. I would buy one. Don't you think Amy? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. No. Unfortunately, Nutella doesn't come from there. So Nutella is chocolate, which comes from the chocolate bean or cocoa bean, um, and hazelnuts. It's made in Italy, invented by this Italian called Mr. Nut Ella. And uh, when he invented it, he couldn't afford to put lots of chocolate in. This is true, this bit. 
So he filled the jar with crushed hazelnuts, which is the other flavour that you've got in it. Um, best bit really, because chocolate's quite expensive. It's more expensive than nuts. There we go. Um, if you have a nut allergy, then what I suggest you do is get some chocolate drop, uh, chocolate chips, melt them in a the microwave for 20 seconds, mix it up so it's a paste, and then you can do exactly the same as this without the nuts. So anyway, so we're now ready to decorate. So here we have, if you can zoom in, we have some love hearts. Who doesn't like a love heart? Uh, we have some white chocolate buttons, marshmallows, they're the best. And we have some Haribo Star Mix. Oh, Haribo Star Mix. Showing my age there. Okay, so now I'm going to open these love hearts because uh, I like to put a love heart in the centre because I'm going to make this as if I was giving it to my mum. Now the thing is, I don't know if you've, oops, I don't know if you've noticed with love hearts, they say obviously different things, don't they? Now you don't want to say. Let me read some of these out. In love. Well, I suppose that'd be okay for my mum. Perfect. Oh yes. My mum will get a big head for you. That's all right. No rude ones. I love you. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we're going to put that in the middle. Pop it there. There we go. See, there's one that says sweetheart. I'm not sure if my mum would appreciate that. But anyway, mm -hmm. there we go. There's one that says winner. Be familiar, Amy. <laughs> anyway, so what you do, uh, just pop another couple, and uh, let's get a different colour, and I'll do it the other way round, which doesn't have any words on it. See, so I just drop it on. There we go, right. Let's put these back into the. So, next bit, we're going to use some uh, white chocolate buttons, and you just literally just pop them on. These are supposed to represent some kind of cheese, I think. You know, like mozzarella. But obviously it tastes nicer than mozzarella. <laughs> so, um, now what I'd like to do is, on my design, I've got the Haribo hearts. And I just pop it in a cross. Now, why would you think I'd put it in a cross? That's right. So when you write something, you give a little kiss. This is it's supposed to represent the kiss. Except it's probably not the best X ever, but anyway. Don't ask me where Harry bows come from, by the way. Maybe it comes from a chicken. Aren't they German? <laughs> they are German, yes. <laughs> and then I had a fried egg on my uh, pizza, so there's a fried egg. Okay, so, I do like marshmallows. So these are mini marshmallows, you don't want the giant marshmallows because it looks it. So, Amy, come, come a bit closer. So, here, marshmallows. You could, put, you could eat one, put one on the pizza, I'm not sure. Anyway, so what you do, have you noticed, if you throw one in the air, comes back down again. Did you know that? It never oops, sticks to the ceiling. I thought you on. It. <laughs> See? Doesn't stick to the ceiling. So, obviously the ones on the floor, I'm not going to stick on my pizza. Cat can have those. So, bit of science for you. Bet you didn't think I'd have a bit of science in here. Just food tech. Oh yes. It's called gravity. So gravity pulls everything back down, not up. That's how come we don't float off the floor and hit the ceiling. Isn't that right, Amy? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you why that happens. Let's just say it's magic. But anyway, so you get some of these and then just drop them from a height. Oops. Once they fall on the floor, your mum or dad will pick up. There we go. Some complaints, Amy. Oh, look at this. And if you really like mini marshmallows, then just put lots of them on. What do you think, Amy? Zoom in. 
I'm not missing. Oops. Let's come out of that edge. I want to have mine inside a bit. And uh, what else should, should I add, Amy? Oh, I've got a little ring. Let's put a ring in. Put a ring on it. Is that how the song goes? Um, anyway, here we go. So when you're happy with it, and you put enough mini marshmallows on, especially if you're gifting this, because when you cut it into slices, because that's the idea, that's what you do with pizzas, you cut it into slices, you want everybody to have a little bit of the same topping, don't you? Anyway, Amy, zoom in. So this is our giant pizza cookie. Now, if you want to gift it to your mum or dad on Valentine's or gran or grandma, then you could pop it on a plate, um, put some foil over the top, uh, just to stop any dust getting on it or whatever. Um, write their name on it on Sunday. Bang. Are you going to eat some? Shall I eat some? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use my blunt knife. Um, okay. Oh, look at that. That's not bad, is it? Obviously, it's not bad because I made it. It smells so good as well. It does smell good, doesn't it? This has been out of the oven only about 10 minutes. Look at that. Oh. Mm. Very good. Mm. See you later. <laughs>